Moon Sky, Agnes Weatherby, oh my god, Craig, oh! Free Range Thompson, Alabaster Pembroke, Mighty Quinn Strand. Now you're talking. 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 Dave McCabe, as I live and breathe. the Dave McCabe YouTube channel. Tonight's episode is Now you're talking with Dave McCabe holiday extravaganza. Tonight we interview a real life elf on the shelf. We have Monica Dunlap, jingle writer. We've got Kate Eradicate Miller with some thoughts on holiday cookies. We've got Emmett Finley, he's a clownfish stand-up comedian making his second appearance on the show. And we also have Elf Perspective. So, it's going to be an amazing show. Stay tuned after the credits for an additional holiday video. First, we need to start off with Grandpa. He talked to me this week and he really has something to get off of his chest. So, without further ado, Grandpa, start the show. I'm walking down the street with my grandpa feet, and I've got something to say. No belly, no hat, no elves around. Tell me, do you see a sleigh? I know it is the season, and you're looking for a reason to find him and give him your list. All this mistaken identity has led to my insanity, and frankly, I'm getting quite pissed. Hey, I'm not Santa Claus. Look at me, and take a pause. Listen, I am a stranger. Why don't you stay in your manger? Hey, I'm not Santa Claus. Why don't you just get lost? I've had enough of this crap. Don't want no kids in my lap. I'm just a guy, just a regular old guy with a beard and glasses and cane. But all of you thinking I'm the other guy has become an unbearable pain in the ass. Oh, pardon my exclaiming. I've grown sick of the explaining I've done so many times for years. This is one last time I'm telling you all, now get the crap out of your ears. Hey, I'm not Santa Claus. Look at me and take a pause. Listen, I'm a stranger. Why don't you stay in your manger? Hey, I'm not Santa Claus. Why don't you just get lost? I've had enough of this crap. Don't want no kids on my lap. Parents, Kids and pets, I want to be clear, all of you are a pain in my rear. I am tired of all this type of attention. Now listen real close. As I mentioned, you seem like intelligent folks, but all of your inquiries feel like pokes. As you can see, you've worn my patient out. I feel I have no option. I'm gonna shout, hey, I'm not Santa Claus. Look at me and take a pause. Listen, I am a stranger. Why don't you stay in your manger? Hey, I'm not Santa Claus. Why don't you just get lost? I've had enough of this crap. Don't want no kids on my lap. Oh, it's Sparky. Oh, what did they do? What did they do to you? Oh my God, they taped the nose? What, you're not Rudolph, Sparky. You're not Rudolph. Oh, this isn't going to help. This isn't going to help at all. You know, Grandpa, I kind of think you like people thinking that you're Santa Claus. I'm just saying. 
Next, we have an exclusive interview with Kate, the elf on the shelf. You know, it didn't go quite like I thought it was going to go, but I'm sure glad we did it. Thanks, Kate. Here it is. I am so excited to finally interview one of Santa's elves on the shelf. Kate, welcome to the show. And now you're talking with Dave McCabe. Hey, Dave. <laughs> North Pole stipulations restrict us of saying what household Kate has been assigned. But rest assured, folks, this interview has been pre-recorded to ensure Kate returns to her post. Kate, you are one of Santa's scout elves, reporting out on the naughty and nice deeds of the children you're assigned. That's a big job. Yeah. Once you arrive, the children's first job is to name you. How did they come up with Kate? I have to admit, I was expecting some name like Snowflake or Candy Cane or Jingles. You know, people think that elves are like magical and mythical and like not endowed with human feelings, but they actually are a lot more like humans than, than you think. How so? Well, I don't know. I mean, like, they have emotions. They're not just there on Christmas. We're always around. It's just that on Christmas, people want us around. But all the other, all the rest of the year, nobody, nobody really, like, wants elves around. It's like we only have one job. It's boring. Ugh. Well, uh, getting back to the job, Kate, um, tell us, is there a particular nice deed that you've witnessed that sticks out in your memory? Well, yeah, so the kids that live in the house that I, you know, oversee, they're usually pretty good. You know, like, they clean their rooms and they fold their clothes and they clear the dishes from the dining room table and, and they put them in the sink. They try, and they don't, they don't even really fight that much. There's really not a lot to do. Yikes, that's really not what I expected. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I feel like when I, I don't know. I just feel like I didn't sign up for this, you know? Yeah, I mean, I know you, you've got to be hidden and you're in a different place every day. Does that not add some excitement? It sounds like you're bored. I'm so bored. Oh. I'm so bored. Oh, God. I am so sorry. Well, maybe... I'm bored may of being an elf. Really? Yes. God, I mean, it's just I not... just want to be a regular human. Oh, I get it. I really I've do. even dyed my hair. Did you know something? No. All elves have silver hair, and it's magic. Yes. And forever, I just dyed it brown, like this dark brown, because I did not want to be an elf. Right. I wanted to be a human. Oh, and now you're stuck in these houses. Now I'm stuck in these houses. It didn't really work. Like, I had brown hair and I was still an elf. Well, hey, getting back to the interview, what naughty deed seems to be acted out re and repeated most often from the children you've been assigned? Well, sometimes Billy feeds his broccoli to the cat. <laughs> you know, secretly. Sure. I mean, except I see it. Well, it's your job. And then the cat, you know. I mean, it becomes clear that the cat's been into the broccoli, but nobody knows that Billy did that, right? right. Nobody knows that Billy was the culprit, except for me. Right. But you've got to report that out to Santa every single night. Right. Yeah. Well, you do have a heavy re travel requirement for your position. Thanks to some holiday magic, you return to the North Pole every single night. So, how's it going with all that travel? The commute is brutal. Sure. But, you know, I mean, I, I try I listen to music while I'm flying through the air. You know, in my headphones. Oh, sure, sure, sure. It makes it kind of bearable. It sucks when all the elves are, like, coming from the same place, though. I mean, it's just like a bottleneck. Oh. Right before the North Pole, there's, like, you know, a good chunk of time there where you're just not moving at all. Yeah. So much for holiday magic, huh? Yeah, it's like, I really wish that that I had more space to, like, get through. Or that I could, like, click my heels or something. But even magic, it, it doesn't get you out of that bottleneck. Ugh, yeah, I, that's, that's really got to be tough. 
I mean, in your day-to-day -day assignment, on top of all of that, I know. you see an awful lot of naughty. I know. So, like, I'd imagine that feels real heavy on you at times. It does. I'm depressed. I mean, can you tell? I'm depressed. Yeah, I, I, I'm sensing something. <laughs> How do you relieve some of that stress and depression? Like, wh what do you turn to? Well, I don't know if I should say this on air. Hey, you're among friends. This is a safe place. Is it? It sure is. <laughs> well... No way. I'm breaking, I'm breaking away. We won't tell anyone. It. Well, I'm sure you've got a lot of great things in your future and a lot of amazing experiences that you're going to have in Hawaii. And I wanted to thank you so much for joining us today. But at the end of the interview, I'd like to finish with a series of questions. So just answer with whatever pops right up into your head. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. What is your favorite nice deed to report out on? Uh, anonymous flowers sending. Aww. You know what? They brighten my day. Do you have a favorite flower? Yeah. Stargazer lily. Nice. It's, they're, they're like light pink and they, they smell so good. And the smell, it like, it spreads all around the house. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like the best room deodorizer ever, ever. made. It's, yeah. 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 Um, what is your least favorite naughty deed to report out on? Um, you know, that's tough. Oftentimes I see kiddos who, who are really mad, mm -hmm. you know, and sure. that's kind of like they ha they're mad about other stuff, but then they act out in different ways that have really nothing to do with the original thing that made them mad. All right. And I hate, like, when that happens, I hate reporting it because, I don't know, I think it should be in a separate category. Right. Because, like, it's not really about the bad behavior. Right. It's about how the kiddo was feeling before exactly. they did it. You and know? it should be under consideration, shouldn't it? It really should be. Yeah. I mean, Santa's kind of a stuck in the stone age man mm, yeah you know what we all need to advance that's for sure yeah so between you and me what's your favorite naughty word my favorite naughty word <laughs> um oh, it's like my love hate favorite naughty word it's moist oh you know what i hear that more often than not from elves and people alike. Yeah, I Just, think I think it's pretty common. Yeah, and it's very, yes, yeah, very common. Let's move on. Yes, please. What sound or noise do you love? Oh, uh, baby laughing? Oh, I love that. What sound or noise do you hate? Oh, baby crying. Mm, yeah, works. And finally, when Santa greets you on Christmas Day, what would you like him to say to you after this season concludes? You can now retire. Nice! I wish I'd have that same wish for myself. Well, Kate, thanks for joining us. I hope your children are more nice than naughty this year. And good luck with the job! Thanks! Things got real with Kate, didn't they? You know, I'm glad she felt comfortable enough to share that with us. Next, we have Monica Dunlap. She's a frequent contributor and jingle writer. And she has a little ditty about an underrepresented holiday character. Monica, we're all ears. Snakes at Christmas time. Snakes at Christmas time. Santa Claus and lots of snow and snakes at Christmas time. Snakes at Christmas time. Candy canes and mistletoe. Santa Claus and lots of
lots of snow and snakes at Christmas time. Snakes at Christmas time. Snakes at Christmas time. Snakes at Christmas time. Candy canes and mistletoe, Santa Claus and lots of snow. Candy canes and mistletoe, Santa Claus and lots of snow. And snakes at Christmas time. Snakes at Christmas time. Snakes, 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 snakes. Remember, we've got Elf Perspective coming up a little later in the show. But next we have former elite roller derby enforcer, Kate Eradicate Miller. She's now a home baker, and she's got some thoughts about holiday cookies. Kate, what are your thoughts? Hey everyone, Eradicate from Eradicate Cakes here. My favorite cookie this time of year is just a spin on an old classic. Throw some red and green M&Ms into a chocolate chip cookie and boom, you've got yourself the perfect holiday treat. Though if I could design the ultimate Christmas cookie, it would have to be a snickerdoodle, like the size of a pizza. I'm talking just 14 inches of, you know, cinnamony, sugary, chewy on the outside, soft on the inside, amaziness. Oh wow, huh? I might have to get on that later. Uh, but you know what? One thing that needs to stop, and you know, I know it's been going on for decades, but uh, you guys gotta stop putting coconut in your Christmas cookies. Nothing against coconut, it's a great flavor, but it's a tropical one. And I, you know, I live in Pennsylvania. When I bite into your Christmas cookie, I don't wanna be reminded of things that I can't have just because it looks like snow. I don't wanna be reminded that I can't have sunshine and warmth and beaches. So just please just stop with the coconut. I hope you guys all have a great holiday season and bake up something great. A snickerdoodle the size of a pizza? Oh man! Next up, we've got Emmett Finley. He's a stand-up comic and a clownfish. This is his second appearance. The first time, it went great. He really slayed him. Emmett, the stage is yours! Thanks, Dave! Hello, everyone! It's really great to see you! Yeah, see you! S-E-A! <laughs> Hold on to your hats! That's what you came here for! Thank you! Thank you again for the wonderful round of Santa applause! <laughs> this year, I'm getting a real tree. Yeah, my friends are concerned, but I told them it's gonna be pine. Ha! <laughs> I mean, I really wanna branch out. You know, really spruce things up. You know, I, I hear Christmas trees are really sensitive. Yeah, they can be sensitive. As a joke one time, I shouted out, hey, you got a lot of balls dressed up like that. It just snapped its twig, <laughs> looked at me straight in the eyes and said, birch, please. Stressful times, stressful times. I can assure you the tree and I are gonna be lit this year. You can count on that. Booyah! Hey, 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 you know, I had some gigs up at the North Pole. I hung around a few of Santa's workers. They were confident. They said they were elf-made folks. You know, elf-taught. And they had really high elf-esteem. <laughs> 
One of them asked me if I knew the alphabet. I said, sure, it's just like a regular alphabet, except it has no L. No L. <laughs> Booyah! Hey, are they keeping things safe up at the North Pole? Well, they sure are. They wipe everything down with sanitizer. Booyah! Wait, 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 there's Murr! There's Murr. Like Frankenstein's? Oh, come on, nobody? Nobody? All right, fine, fine. Hey, you know, a couple of the workers up there asked if I wanted to go to the North Pole After Hours Club. Music, dancers, heck, why not? It was a tiny place. I felt claustrophobic. <laughs> well, they pushed me right up next to the stage. Clearly, the dancer wanted me to make it rain. <laughs> all I had was a fin. Seriously. I mean, these can't all be Christmas puns. So, I was singing along. When I think about Yule, I touch my elf. <laughs> well, she did not think I was funny. She grabbed me by my dorsal, got real close, and said, Say it to my face. I dare you. <laughs> well, I couldn't have did that. It would have been rude off of me. <laughs> well, so much for my chance of getting an elfie with her. You know, she was beautiful when she smiled, but when she was not smiling, you guessed it, R-G-F. Resting Grinch face! Booyah! Oh, oh, the music there was perfect. All oh, the jingle ladies, all oh, the jingle ladies, and um, um, slay my name, slay my name. Two of my favorite songs from Beyond Slay. <laughs> and by I am sure no coincidence, on comes. If you're having who feel problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but the Grinch ain't one. <laughs> So Jay-Z was represented as well. Well, hey, that's my time. You've been a terrific audience. And remember, what happens under the mistletoe stays under the mistletoe. Booyah! I'm Emmett Finley. Happy Holidays! I like him. I like him. I think he's fun. You laughed. You all laughed. Good job, Emmett. Hey, next up, did you know that there's a progression with the workers at the North Pole? They kind of start off one way and they end up another way. I didn't know this, but now we're all going to know it. Now I present to you Elf Perspective. We are just over a week before the big day. The networks have covered the workforce efforts of the non-North Pole employees, but tonight, our show has exclusive access to North Pole Elves. Twinkles! And Diggles. They are here to discuss what it's like for them during this time of year. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Twinkles and Diggles. Now you're talking with Dave McCabe. Clearly, this must be an intense time of year for you. Can you describe what your day-to-day -day feels like? Well, of course all of us elves get so busy in the lead-up to Christmas. It's my very first year getting to work inside the toy shop, which means that I get to spend 18 hours a day just hammering away at all of those plastic parts that make little children's dreams come true. Oh, my goodness, Twinkles, I, I really miss those days. Uh, yes, uh, for me nowadays, uh, well, the, the, all the coal mining really takes place earlier in the year, and at this point we get on to the, to the carving and the sculpting of the coal. Uh, you see, it's sort of an outdated stereotype that they only give people lumps of coals uh, in their stocking for Christmas. Uh, on the contrary, we've started to uh, adapt to a new model where we uh, carve them into little shapes, sort of as a way of providing some feedback, maybe some corrective feedback. So what I like to do is I take a lump of coal and I uh, carve it into a shape that symbolically represents uh, the worst thing the child did that year. For example, if they sneezed on the produce uh, in the supermarket, I might carve it into a, a bunch of grapes. Or if they uh, shot their sister in the eye with a, with a Nerf gun, then perhaps I would uh, carve it into the shape of an eyeball. Or if they stole a chocolate bar from Mr. Thompson's corner store, I might carve the coal into uh, 
a little sculpture of Mr. Thompson, uh, penniless, uh, destitute, and starving on the street, you know? So it's all just sort of a way of trying to correct, uh, correct the, the, the children and, and help them to improve their ways. That sounds like a lot of work. Uh, can you describe your work-life balance during the season? Life. Life, is, life. life is work. Life is work. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. That's true. That's true. Whether whether you're in uh, whether you're in Twinkle's age bracket, working on working on the toys with those dexterous little fingers, or when you've aged up like me and uh, your calloused hands have to work in the coal mines instead, there's really no break, is there? No, of course not. I mean, every single one of us dreads the day when we lose the dexterity to be able to work on the finely attuned little uh, electronics and everything and have to trudge out to the coal mines for the first time. But, you know, uh, until then, I get to stay in a nice, warm uh, toy workshop oh. and, and bring joy to people. Oh. And, 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 you know, it's fine that I just, just never have any time to myself. Just never. Just never any time. It's excellent. Uh, what activity do you partake in to help unwind at the end of the day? Oh well, it's a it's a little hard to tell when the uh, when the work day ends down in the uh, down in the coal mines. We don't get a whole lot of light uh, down there. But generally, when we when we feel like we can't work any longer, we uh, we are allowed to go off and uh, sleep. And oftentimes, if I feel like I can't quite get to sleep yet, what I do is uh, we we retrieve sometimes these little uh, sparkly colored stones down there in the mines. Santa says we have no use for those. We're certainly not going to give those to the naughty children. Uh, so I generally take those down to the chasm at the very end of the mine complex, and I just go ahead and plunk down on the edge and throw those little uh, sparkly colored stones down there and hear them plunk off into the abyss. It's very uh, and very meditative. No kidding. Yes. Cause See, what I do at the end of the workday, just to, you know, uh, keep myself centered, is I'll go over to the mine shaft and I will just drop garbage down it and listen and wait for it to hit the bottom and just contemplate the never-ending march of time until I am inevitably relegated down into those dark, deep depths. It's it's really, you know, it's really not that bad down here. There's plenty of, uh, plenty of camaraderie. We all, uh, we all... We all keep each other company, and you'll, you'll, you'll have a good time down here someday, Twinkles. I know you will. I sure hope so, Diggles. I sure do. What is it you look forward to most as the season approaches? Oh, well, you see, all of the uh, workers in the toy shop, we get to gather around this big mystical screen and watch as the children open the toys that we've made for them. And we get to just see the light of joy on their faces. And it's one of those bittersweet moments where you know that, you know, some of these toys are just going to get forgotten over the years. But for now, for this one shining moment, you've just really made somebody's life better. Oh, I miss that. I do miss that. Uh, down in the mines, they don't really have uh, electricity down there, so we don't have those luxuries. Although, I guess, I guess the one thing that I really do look forward to is that Santa does uh, print out copies of all the letters that the naughty children write to him, all their wish lists and things, and we, all, we like to paste those up on the walls, you know, gather around them, uh, have a good laugh. It's good for morale, you know, seeing, seeing the children uh, uh, requesting this and that when we know that all they're actually going to get is a lump of coal carved into the shape of a, of a Simpsons meme. So we have a good laugh at them. Twinkles and Diggles, thanks oh, again is. so much for your time. It was amazing to hear of your experience as elves. I know you have a lot of work today. Stay safe, and thanks again. Happy holidays! Happy holidays! That kind of hard-hitting expose and storytelling can only be brought to you by the investigative reporters from the Now You're Talking team. Thanks, Joe. And you know what? Thanks all the performers for all that you gave to the show. And thank you for tuning in to the Dave McCabe channel. Remember, hit that subscribe button and then you'll get more content just like this and maybe even better. Happy Holidays! <laughs>